Muy buenos días, señoras. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude on behalf of the National Security Department of the government to INCIBE and its director, Alberto Fernández, and the whole team for inviting us to this conference. Today I would like to uh, cover the topic that I know you already know about, the new national cybersecurity strategy. In order to give you a couple of data, uh, these security strategies are depend uh, directly on the sec national security strategy, which is the framework for every single uh, sec section of uh, national security. We're speaking about cyber security, fight against uh, terrorism, etc. And taking this as a base, this uh, national strategy, we will develop one single strategy for every specific sector. In 2013, a new security, national security strategy was created, and this developed a new cyber security strategy, also in 2013. The last month of December in 2017, the Council of Ministers passed on a new uh, national security strategy that stated the revision of this cybersecurity strategy. The National Security Council is responsible for this kind of uh, sectoral uh, strategies and also establish a new development procedure and this procedure starts right now and it's quite simple the security national security council gives the development of this strategy and uh, creates a work team both from the association and the civil society. So both work groups draft a proposal that is passed on to the National Cyber Security Council and then uh, to the National Security Council. Well, first of all, I would like to give you a brief introduction. The, this strategy well, I don't know what, it, it will, what, what we will develop in the end, but there are a couple of aspects that uh, we think should be included, because we understand that this process is, uh, is somehow a race because the cyber security national strategy in 2013 will develop this new strategy that will see the light in four or five months. We, will, uh, we were thinking about 2019. So this strategy is, uh, we will try to give a vision that goes from the philosophical point of view to the daily point of view. So uh, as I was saying, we are speaking about a race in cyber security in Spain, and which challenges do we think that we need to keep on thinking about? We are going to speak about Europe and our alignment with Europe, and for our country, it is necessary an, al an alignment and a boost process and a synergy with Europe. Another very important point is cybersecurity and crisis management that needs uh, to be boosted in our country. And then two elements that are a cornerstone for our department because without them, this, uh, what we think about the strategy wouldn't come true. So, Klaus Evitz, I think uh, most of you will have heard about you, was a Prussian general that is uh, hugely mentioned in all the different armies in the world. I think nobody was able to read the whole works of Clausewitz, but people like to quote them. And 
Therefore, speaking about clouds bit, for us at our department, strategy is something quite simple. At the end of the day, it's just about establishing an objective and our aim for cybersecurity, which is reflected in the strategies in 2013 and 2017, is quite simple, quite obvious, which is the safe use of cyberspace by management, private sector and citizenship. A strategy identifies what uh, prevents this aim to be true, cyber espionage, cyber terrorism, uh, phishing, etc. So every single aspect that would threat this use, safe use of cyberspace. So strategy is about drafting a plan in order to guarantee this aim. Therefore, we check if the organization that we have is sufficient in order to fulfill this plan, and also if the um, if the tools that we have are the tools that we need. So for many other people, a strategy is actually a letter to the three wise men. I think among most of you, and hopefully uh, somebody will be surprised, well, actually the three wise men are our own parents. So if I was asked in a test which one of these definitions of strategy is the correct one, I would say all of them are right, because I think strategy is also a letter to the three wise men, and therefore the parents are able in the end to give these presents to the children. And in this case, our parents are the management sections, the private sector, and the citizenship. And st a strategy is also uh, an opportunity in order to boost cyber security and to imply everyone. This is why strategy are so important. And without developing a strategy, we cannot involve the parents, as I have mentioned, the private sector, the scholars, etc. Well, in the end, it might be a paper that uh, can be uh, filed just like with the Clausewitz books, but this is why uh, the development is so important. <laughs> As I was saying, we are not starting from scratch, and the history of cybersecurity in Spain is quite short. I think it's the same for every single country in the world, because I think in our environment we are in a quite similar state. In 1996, we started to create a specific unit to fight against cybercrime, especially in the environment of the National Police and the Spanish Civil Guard. And in 2004, the National Center for the Protection of Critical Infrastructures uh, before it was called INTECO, and right now it's called INCIBE, and the Joint Command on Cyber Defense. And in 2012, we are created, which is the National Security Department, and we draft this first strategy in Spain. And it was quite obvious that we had two great threats at that point, cyber terrorism and cyber threats. And while Spain is a reference country in matters of terrorism, in this other environment, we were actually starting from scratch. We had several uh, important elements, but they were not connected, and we didn't have enough tools. And this is why we created with uh, an aim objective uh, cyber security, because we thought this was the sector that was the most important one. And little by little, we started to develop a cyber security strategy, what, which was created in 2013. And we created a cyber security national council, and we saw that all the different organizations that were quite isolated could sit together at the same table and start drafting the same plans. And this is how we created the 
Cybersecurity National Plan. And we created something that was also very important because we created a national security law that gave the priority to cybersecurity and included some several important aspects. For example, a commission in order to discuss cybersecurity issues. And actually, we started the conference with a cybersecurity speech, and I think. Uh, many of you that are seated here today participated on that commission. And in December 2017, we created a new cybersecurity national strategy and a new cycle as well. So these are the aspects that we consider at the cyber national cybersecurity department that must be covered in this new cybersecurity strategy. For example, something that we have been thinking about was the creation of a security operations center which is called SOC in Spanish, or ministries in Spain and several public organizations do not have access to the most important tools. They have a lot of capacities, but, but some organizations don't. This is why this has been planned, and in 24 months, we will constitute this SOC directed by the General Secretary of Digital Management and it will be operated by the Cryptological National Center. Another very important aspect is the uh, fostering of S autonomical SOCs and regional as well. So the regional system in Spain is quite important and therefore it is necessary for this uh, regional government to have their own security, cyber security centers. For example, right now in Catalonia, Basque Country, Valencia, and in some other regions, already have them. But every single uh, autonomic region should have their own cyber security center. Uh, speaking about the careers and the different profiles, we think that we need a serious approach to the profiles and the careers necessary to uh, to work in cybersecurity. We need to regulate it and to define it. But what we see right now is that this is quite disorganized and this would be a good moment in order to arrange this, to establish some lines and to organize the curricula to the cybersecurity professionals. Some other aspect that I will mention is the constitution of interchange and analysis platform regarding sectorial information. Sometimes it's quite difficult to put this into practice because the private sector is huge, because we are speaking about private university, private companies, banks, etc. This is why we think that something that would make it easier to cooperate between the different groups is uh, the gathering between different sectors. For example, there is a group that gathers all the companies of the maritime sector, and we develop uh, cybersecurity programs specific for that sector, and they share this information between the different members of the group, and they share all the resources, also with the banks, and this is what we understand by sectorial organizations. And in some other sectors, this doesn't exist, and I, we think that this is very positive for the companies and the administration. Speaking about uh, small enterprises, I think we need to involve them in cybersecurity issues 
Muchas empresas grandes están Many big companies de que, de que already the, are already importante. aware of the importance of cybersecurity. But when we reach SMEs, we don't see this awareness because sometimes they don't consider that it's important for them to have access to cybersecurity services. Therefore, it is important to be aware of this fact. For SMEs, they don't give that same importance. And talent regarding uh, administration and public and private companies. Well, we are actually running out of time, so I need to be brief. So speaking about Europe, well, I think if we were stressing uh, that the initial point was 1996 when we created this first unit, the story, the European story of cybersecurity could be even shorter. Spain, as a member of the European Union, uh, made a contribution to these advances in the European Union and is integrated in every single development regarding cybersecurity. For example, the NIS directive, we are drafting it at the Parliament. And the directive is quite important because afterwards you need to put this law into practice. And in order to put this into practice, we need several uh, tools. We need to interchange information. We need to have access to platforms that allow us to do so. We need to speak the same language when we speak about incidents. We must have the same regulations, etc. So at the end, we need to make a couple of things clear with this new directive. Uh, the, United, the, the European Union wants to boost ENISA. It was quite marginalized inside the European Union, and we need to have an agency that fosters what the European Union does in the sector of crisis management, capacitation, and response to incidents, etc. So from the National Security Department, as a member of INISA, we have actually boosted this because we think that INISA plays a very important role in the European Union. And the uh, cybersecurity competence uh, center network and also a European center, we actually have a very good position and or also to guarantee that our excellent centers are integrated in this network. Because at the end of the day, uh, all the European Union funding will come from this network. Otherwise, we will be left behind and we wouldn't make the most out of all the benefits that we have as Europe, at the European Union members. Regarding incident management, I think we have very good capacities in the section of cybersecurity, but we are we have still so much to learn. A crisis stands a high, high impact incident that changes the normal processes of our, an organization, but also the perception that we have of this incident can also generate a crisis. In 2017, uh, we realized that the line between crisis and normal situation is thinner on a day-by-day -day basis. And I think that we need to go forward, both from the administration and the private companies, regarding this incident management. In this circle that you see is a regular crisis management circle, we see the different factors. In order to solve incidents, 
When this incident generates a crisis, we need more stakeholders in order to tackle this. We need communication, specialized uh, cybersecurity communications, in order for us to to say people what is actually going on. We need to integrate in this world civil protection, and if we carry out this management, we will need cyber protection. So in the environment of our crisis management is actually the world of cybersecurity itself. In Spain, we have created a crisis management model regarding cybersecurity that uh, taking as a base the CERC as a reference and also the joint command on cyber defense and some other institutions from the different sectors. We report to a permanent commission on cybersecurity depending on the National Cyber Security Council. So we all have this information, we pass it on to the National Cyber Security Council and the president is the one that proposed to the National Security Council and the president of the government and we propose that this is a situation committee depending on this committee. Therefore, we have created a system that allows us to escalate every single report, and this system has been put into practice throughout the last several years, need to be implemented and needs to work properly, and this is why we need to invest more in cyber security. And speaking about our experience, about a strategy, and what can be the difference between a strategy being a letter to the three wise men that leaves a kid crying or a happy kid, is the organization that can tackle all these different aspects we have spoken about. And regarding the National Cybersecurity Department, there is a clear idea. We need to, to evolve, we need to grow up. The organization that we have right now cannot implement all the ideas that we have proposed. Regarding the budget, uh, this is a quite difficult aspect. No or a single organism has its own budget. We all depend on other departments, etc. And the general budget of our state has not a quantity assigned to cyber security. This is why we think it is very important to create a national authority on cyber security. Maybe a ministry would be too much, but we could create a ministry that deals with digital transformation or digital advance or at least a secretary of state that tackles cyber security and the secretary of state which is at the end of the day the head of cyber security in Spain must have several support elements. There could be a cyber security agency with a bigger capacity than the ones we have right now and this agency could facilitate the coordination of the stakeholders nowadays and also the international connection, especially with Europe. We are speaking about INISA and also to allow coordination with the private sector. This is why we believe that it's essential for this organization to keep on growing up and to gain importance. So these are just some ideas, by, but the strategy is still to be drafted. And I have uh, given you some ideas about our experience uh, throughout six years, but this text, we expect it to be very, uh, to involve a lot of people so that many different people can have the opportunity to participate and enrich it even more. So I would like to take the opportunity 
to speak to so many members of the cybersecurity community because for me this strategy is different because I will leave my charge the next week. So this is why I would like to express my gratitude for the collaboration with us because in the end, working with the SN was uh, a synonym for working for a better society. Therefore, for me, it was very easy to work because I could count on the best uh, professionals such as Alejandro Pinto and so many others that carried out an excellent job. So for, for all of you, thank you very much and see you very soon.